Uh, hello, my name is Andrew Burrell, and I would like to introduce you to our Senior Design 2 project, also titled Project Nightwatch, and here is the rest of the team. I am Kyle Jinko. I am Brandon Kim. I am Umberto Ruiz. Our objective is to create an easy to build and easy to field tool that can be used in natural defense or search and rescue operations. Uh, here's our project goals and deliverables. This is just a list of all the different documentation and uh, demos that we had to do to present our pro uh, final project. And here is how we are we implemented our design. Here we have a 3D, a 3D mob designed uh, enclosure that houses a Raspberry Pi, uh, bright, I mean, as well as a fluoroleptin camera that is connected to said Pi, as well as a, a set of clamps that was also designed in 3D and is connected by a Raspberry Pi uh, as well. And here is a block diagram of the project. As you can see, the left is a diagram of the controller layout, and to the right is a layout of our quadcopter. Uh, these are our hardware design requirements. Uh, Fleet camera breakup board have to integrate with the Raspberry Pi 4. Our servo motors 1 and 2 have to be capable uh, one has to be capable of opening and closing clamp, two, capable of rotating 90 degrees. The quadcopter has to handle a weight requirement, and the button controls have to communicate via RF. Uh, our hardware design, uh, we are using the Holystone 700G drone and quadcopter. The Flare Lepton 3.5 microthermal camera, Raspberry Pi 4, two digital servos, a 433 megahertz wireless transmitter and receiver, a battery pack, and the Pure Thermal 2 Lepton breakout board. The software requirements for uh, our project is being able to stream wirelessly the, uh, the Flare video from the drones to some other alternative device, whether that be a phone or a laptop, uh, be able to control both both servos, one servo for the flare camera and one for releasing the payload. Both of those, all of this will be control, uh, controlled through a Python, two Python scripts. The first of those Python scripts is nightwatch.py. This is what is used to control the, uh, control the motors and receive signals from the, uh, from the transmitter. Uh, the pins used are 11, 13, 13, 18, 11, 13, 16, 18, and 22. 11 and 13 are the PWMs for both the uh, clamp and camera servos. 16, 18, and 22 are for look, <coughs> to look forward, look down, and open and close the clamp, respectively. The PWMs for the, <laughs> PWMs for duty cycles for both servos are the same for both the camera and clamp being 5.5 and 10.5 and 10.5 for turning clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, on the left, you can see a flow diagram of the program. It is just a simple while loop with some if statements that looks for the button presses, looks for those signals coming. The second program is a uh, streaming up high. This is what sets up our streaming. This is done made possible through two Python packages or Raspberry Pi packages. FS Webcam allows for the Pi to use USB cameras and PyShine allows for video processing and streaming over Wi-Fi. Uh, the program just sets up the host on the Pi itself, streams over Wi-Fi to a URL of Pi's IP address and the port number. So the methodology that we decided to use would be testing uh, our equipment first that we're going to be using, such as the servo motors, just to make sure that they're able to push their, I mean, push their weight and can be able, and able to be used in the design that we're going to be making, as well as testing the drone for ease of flight and weight capacity, um, as 
And another thing that we also took to approach was 3D printing, which would be uh, designing multiple iterations of various parts. Um, the type of experimental design we, that our team used was a agile modular approach with a heavy emphasis on component testing, where we try components, identify issues, and solve the problems. Uh, should a component fail to meet our standards, um, we would have to cons we would consider moving on to the next available component. Uh, for our discussion result discussion of results, we're going to be talking about the drone. Can it be able to fly? The camera and breaker board, it being able to stream video. Uh, cus the custom button assembly allows for for uh, motor the motor signaling and the payload system. Uh, so for this project, we ended up using the, for our quadcopter, we ended up using the Holystone HS700D uh, GPS drone. Uh, it came with a 2800 milliamp battery that allowed it to have about 22 minutes of flight time, and it uses a control frequency about 2.4 gigahertz. And after some testing, we found out that our drone can pick up about 420 grams and with all of our uh, components attached to it it can carry about 25 grams which is about an empty coke bottle All right, uh, these see our camera and breakup board assembly. You use the Fleer Lepton 3.5 camera that has steady state rate of about 8.5 hertz and a thermal spectral range of uses long wave infrared, uh, it's more specifically 8 to 14 micrometers. Uh, we also use the Pure Thermal 2 micro board, which connects the camera to the Pi via a micro USB to USB connector. Uh, the camera provides a steady stream over Wi-Fi, although there is about a second delay over a local network, but the resolution is as advertised. Here is some videos of us doing some streaming testing and just general testing with the camera. The first video is in a more dimly light room with Kyle hiding in the background. You can barely see him here, but over on the actual stream, you can see him clearly. And the second video is us in the front of Field of Watts doing distance testing with the camera with people setting up some stuff for an event. And on the stream, you can clearly make out those little dots, which are the heat signatures of those people. And this is our custom button assembly. Use the Kia chip RF transmitter and receiver uh, operates at 433.92 megahertz. Uh, the transmitter has a distance of about uh, 20 to 100 meters, and the receiver has a distance of about 50 meters. Uh, our button assembly uses three momentary push button switches. Uh, all components are soldered onto an Adafruit semi perma board. And the entire assembly is powered by the 3.3 volt and ground connections in the Holystone controller. As you can see here, this is our button assembly. And this is a picture of our 3.3 volt and ground connections inside the controller. Uh, for the payload assembly, we used two five I mean two micro servo motors, uh, which received a PWM signal from the Raspberry Pi. They both weigh uh, five grams, and those were used in the final in the final assembly. Uh, the design also used two 3D clamps, as shown in. I mean, in the project uh, implementation slide, uh, which both had 10% infill for the set, for the purpose of weight reduction, uh, as well as well as a 3D housing, where the final where the final uh, design uses a slimmer, I mean, a, a slimmer shape of 15, which also uses 15% infill, 
which is 10% less than the initial than one initially used in a in a previous prototype. Uh, the challenges that we saw, the bottlenecks we saw during this project, supply chain issues. We weren't able to get some components in on time. It would take weeks. Uh, initially, the Raspberry Pi did not recognize the leptin camera. Leptin camera as a camera, just some random peripheral, which is why we use the pure, pure thermal too. Uh, the drone did not have a large weight capacity. This is our biggest issue. Uh, as professional drones that were a, are capable of lifting large large uh, payloads are very expensive. It would go over our budget. And uh, the initial drone that we started off this project didn't fly super consistently. Again, that's mostly because it wasn't it's a, the drone wasn't designed to be picking things up, so we had to move them. Uh, future direct direction: uh, make the button assembly into a P PCB and integrate it into the controller design uh, rather than just soldering in the power and uh, the power and ground. Uh, the big change that we would make is to get a better drone, one that could pick up heavier objects. And, uh, and if we were to move on to picking up heavier objects, we may need to also redesign clamps to fit a, get a tighter fit. <laughs> So uh, in, in conclusions, uh, we decided that we felt like we needed better time management due to supply chain issues. We kind of stalled, had gaps where no progress is made or very little progress is made in the project. And as well as having inner, earlier integration to allow for better tech bug, bug fixing and uh, testing of the final design. And uh, here are the references we used for this, for our project. We, uh, we would like to also thank uh, the EC Department of Clemson for helping with funding, as well as Dr. Raza for all help and guidance in helping us get to this final design. Uh, I am Brandon Kim. I'm Kyle Jenko. I'm Alberto Ruiz. And I'm Andrew Burrell. Thank you for watching our video.